Uh, let's get into this issue of hotel quarantine. You know, the, these schemes were set up by the state governments under the auspices of the federal government to allow Australians to return home. All different manner of uh, ways in which these systems were managed, most of the time involving the uniforms of army or police, very differently in Victoria, as we've seen. The Prime Minister's now announced a nationwide review into how each state operated the hotel quarantine system and presumably to improve it going forward. And who better than Jane Halton to lead this review? She's a former chair of the board of the World Health Organization, a former president of the World Health Assembly. She chairs the international body called the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation. She also sits on the board of Scott Morrison's COVID-19 Coordination Commission and she has a day job on the ANZ and many other things. I don't know how you found the time, Jamie. Thank God it's you and not someone else doing it because I've got faith in you. What is, what's your terms of reference for this review? What do you, what's the Prime Minister want you to achieve? Well, thank you, Peter, and good evening. And to start with, it's a decision of the National Cabinet. Uh, in other words, all the state uh, premiers, uh, including from the territories as well as the Prime Minister, to ask for a review of hotel quarantine. And essentially, we need to know a couple of things. Firstly, what provisions are in place for infection control? Uh, secondly, are people being properly trained? to actually do that when they work in those kind of contexts? Are they compliant with those requirements? And then really importantly, uh, the people who are actually in quarantine, are they being properly looked after? And I mean, I think we all know it's, it's not an easy thing to go into quarantine for a couple of weeks. So we need to look at all of those dimensions. But the way I describe this is it's looking forward. Uh, how do we make sure that we can all have confidence as we go forward? Because 60,000 people have come back to the country and there's still a few out there who'd like to come home too. So I take that to mean this is not an inquiry per se into what's gone wrong in places like Victoria, but more an audit of the system that we have to ensure that it's, it's purpose built or it's, it's working as effectively as it can going forward. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly how I'm seeing it. I mean, essentially, and I've said, if I see something early on that I'm worried about, I'm not going to wait to write a report about it. I'm going to be making sure that I bring that to the attention of the relevant authorities. Uh, we need to make sure that this is uh, shipshape and able to deliver what we all want, which is any virus that's imported into the country, that it stays in hotel quarantine until the person concerned is free of that virus, but that they're properly cared for and that we can all have confidence so that system is working. Give me a sense of, of your reporting time frame, uh, Jane, and also what access you have to the state bureaucracy. I mean, can you pull... We've seen these leaked uh, emails between departments in Victoria warning against this and, and asking for that. Will you get access to those documents? Will you be able to, to speak to uh, officials in various state jurisdictions? Well, it's funny you should say that because uh, I was only looking at the list of people this afternoon. I've already made a couple of calls. Uh, I can't compel anybody, but this is a decision of the National Cabinet, so I have absolutely no doubt that relevant officials will be happy uh, to cooperate. I'm not going, and I can't, compel documents in the way that an inquiry could, but I don't necessarily think uh, that we need to do that. We need to look at the guidelines. We need to look at the training arrangements. We need to look at the supervision arrangements to make sure that all of those things are up to scratch and and certainly I would think in fact I'm absolutely confident that there's no one out there working in the states and territories that doesn't want to do the absolute best job possible uh, so that's one of the things we'll be looking at in terms of timetable um, this will take us a little while and that's something I've got to get my head around in the next couple of days we're only on a day about two and a half Peter so mm -hmm. um, certainly we'll be trying to resolve that shortly. Is there any intention to have the findings made public from your uh, re review? Well, we haven't even discussed that yet, but I'll, I'll be absolutely amazed if people won't want to be very clear about what's actually been recommended here. I mean, essentially, we need everybody to know how it is we can improve these things. And if we don't tell them that, they won't know and they won't be able to do that. So uh, certainly it's my expectation that we'll be talking... Uh, quite clearly about what we find and what it is we need to do to make sure things are very, very, very safe. I've got to ask you on a related issue to, to COVID-19. There's been a whole sort of re-emergence of this debate about strategy today, suppression versus eradication. Your 
as expert as anyone I could have on the program, do you have a view and, and what's sort of the pluses and minuses of both approaches? Well, I mean, essentially, it, let, let's be clear, unless you actually eradicate a virus from the entire globe, and we've actually done that with smallpox. Um, some of us are old enough to remember having to have our smallpox jabs when we were little. I've still got the scar to prove it, in my case. So have I. Uh, and we, yes, there you go. And essentially, we managed to get rid of that virus around the world because we had a vaccine and the entire world uniformly actually went after that virus and we managed to succeed and it took many many years now until we achieved that we had outbreaks and essentially that's the challenge one country might be able to keep it out for a while but exactly as we just discussed unless the entire world is going to stop moving essentially if one country's got it we've actually all got it so i think and I think uh, the Premier Gladys Berejiklian has talked uh, in language about minimising. So actually, it's a kind of variant on the suppression, if you like. But I think that's the way to think about this. We need as little of this virus anywhere in our communities as we can humanly manage. And we need to get on top of it when we actually see an outbreak. And we need to do that really, really fast. But I suspect the task of elimination, unless no one's going to move a muscle until there's a, a vaccine and until it's eradicated from around the world, I think that's a very big ask, uh, Peter. And I would say I think the economic cost of it is horrendous. Well, I think you're right. Now, obviously, we've got this flare-up in the United States. Jane Holton, thank you very much for your time.